All right, so where we left off with the photoelectric effect uh, was when we first introduced the effect, we were talking about it in terms of frequencies. So for example, we were talking about a threshold frequency as in a minimum frequency of light that you need in order to eject an electron from a metal surface. What Einstein then clarified for us was that we could also be talking about energies. And uh, he described the relationship between frequency and energy, that they're proportional. If you want to know the energy, you just multiply the frequency by Planck's constant. So now we can talk about it in different terms. For example, talking about E sub i, which is the infinite energy or the energy of the light that comes in or talking about work function here, and that's just another way to say threshold energy. So the work function is the minimum amount of energy that's required in order to eject an electron. And uh, most of you understand this relationship here, which is a little bit cut off, but it is <laughs> all the way on in your notes. And that is what you solve the clicker question on, how you can figure out, for example, the kinetic energy of the ejected electron by looking at the difference between how much energy you put in and how much energy is required to eject that electron in the first place. So in this class, we'll be talking about energy a lot. Uh, and it's often useful to draw some sort of energy diagram to visualize the differences in energy that we're discussing. So we do this here for the photoelectric effect. And in terms of the photoelectric effect, what we know the important point is, is that the incoming photon has to be equal or greater in energy than the work function of the metal. So here we have energy increasing on the y-axis, and you see this straight line at the bottom here is lower down on the graph, and that's the energy of a bound electron. So that's going to be a low, stable energy. Uh, but we see if we have a free electron, as we do in this dotted line here, that's going to be a higher energy that's less stable. So if we want to go from that stable state to that less stable state, we need to put in a certain amount of energy to our system. And that's what we define as the work function here, that difference between the free electron and the electron bound to the metal. So the most basic case uh, to understand, which is what we just saw, is a case where we have the incident energy coming in, and that incident energy is greater than the work function. And in that case, what we see is that we have an electron that is ejected. That makes sense, and it also makes sense that this little extra bit here, that's the amount of energy that we have that goes into the kinetic energy of the electron. So that's how we could also graph figuring out the kinetic energy. So in the second case, what we have is, is what, it, what happens if we have the incident energy at some amount that's less than the work function. And this, in this case, we're showing one half of the work function. So in this case, we don't have enough energy to eject an electron. So an electron is not ejected. And that's pretty clear, too. And the question I want to pose to you is instead the third case here. So in the third case, what I'm showing is that we have, now we're not just talking about one photon, we're talking about three photons. Let's say we shoot them all at the same time at our metal, each of them having uh, some energy that's, let's say, one half the work function. So just to take a little bit of an informal survey, who thinks here that we will have an electron that is ejected in this case? So a couple hands, all right. Um, and what about uh, who thinks that we will not have enough energy here? All right, we've got a big majority. Uh, and both are, are logical ways of thinking, but it turns out that the majority is correct, which is not always the case. Uh, but the electron is not ejected in this case. And the reason for this, and this is a very important point about the photoelectric effect, and the point here is that the electrons here are acting as particles. You can't just add those energies together. One individual particle is being absorbed by the metal and exciting an electron. So having other particles around that have the same energy that you could technically add up if you were adding them up like a wave, you can't do the same thing with particles. They're all separate. So the take home message is whether you have three photons or three million photons that you're shooting at your metal, if you're not at that minimum frequency or that minimum energy that you need, nothing is going to happen.